cross So despised by the world As a wondrous attraction For me For the dear Lamb of God Lift His glory above To bear it to dark Calvary So I'll cherish your rugged cross To heal my trophies at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. Do you realize in Acts chapter 1 verses 3, the only place in the gospel that speaks in reference with the word passion is in reference to his cross? Wow. It said, after his passion, he showed himself alive with many infallible, undeniable proofs. Acts 1-3. Somebody say, there's the gospel. The only word, passion, that passion, the only time, rather, passion is used in the gospel record, even in the early church, Acts 1-3, it was in reference to his suffering on the cross. Somebody say, it's still linked there. When people's in love with what he did for them on the cross... Their passion will be displayed in how they live every day and how they go after him and what they do for him. Somebody say, ain't that amazing? The word passion means suffering. Amen. Friend, you ain't got passion for God if you can't follow him when you suffer. Amen. Jesus was so passionate for me and you, he suffered for us to have a relationship with him. Amen. Well, brother, you don't know what I'm having to go through for God. Shut up. <laughs> the kids is out of here. We can say it louder again. Shut up. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. Or like the old gangster on Bugs Money said to Bugs one time, he said, shit up, shit nip. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Why? Because this ain't about what we go through for God. This is about what he went through for us. Amen. And when it's in that order, oh, glory. Can't nothing rob us of passion for God. Amen. Brother Rob, come here for a moment since everybody's talking. He told me a story yesterday about this guy that couldn't figure out, didn't understand why, you know, those Pentecostal bunch get so kind of uppity, uppity and holler and move and jump and shout and have long surfaces. Might as well because we're going to have one today. <laughs> tell, 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 tell that story about that for me before we do it. Uh, this, this fellow I know that I talked to, and he's a good friend of mine. He's a Baptist and he's was talking, he said, yeah, I don't understand your Pentecost, y'all in church a real long time. He said, and then y'all get really emotional and jump and holler and dance around and sometimes run around. And I didn't say anything to him and I kind of said, you know, got to reveal it to him somehow. <laughs> and it was last year when Georgia was playing for a national championship and he was a real big fan of of the Bulldogs, and they happened to have won that night. And the next morning, he said, yeah, man, I stayed up all night watching that game. He said, I was jumping up and down, hollering and carrying on. He said, I even broke my bed when they won, jumping up and down on my bed. I said, I said I'm not going to say his name. And I said, his name? And I said, let me ask you something. I said, you jumped around and hooting and hollered and broke your bed over some guys playing a, a football game. But you want to sit there and can't understand why I or the Pentecost get excited about God. I said, you might want to check your priorities. And he stopped me. He said, you know, he said, you're right. I left it at that. Like I said, I mean, God revealed it. Amen. Yeah. And God be the glory. Yeah. You were the God somehow a year later. God somehow a year later. Brother Rob was the manifestation of God somehow. Amen. Amen. Praise God. But ain't that real? Ain't that real? Yeah. Why are we so passionate? Why, why can't I just stand up here and... If you have your Bibles, 
I won't keep you long. You know, I would have said that 30 minutes ago. Y'all be eating at Cracker Barrel right now. Y'all be finishing your food right now. Well, not at Cracker Barrel. You'll wait. Uh, you'll wait there for a while. If you don't know where that's at. That's where the barrels crack. Yeah, 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 yeah. But a lot of other places, they're already leaving. Amen. But but you understand what I'm saying? Why? Why? Because Acts one and three says after his passion. Literally in Greek, that word passion is suffering. It is a word of expression for what he went through on the cross for us. But it's still the word passion. It ain't the word definition of passion that we would understand in our language, but it's still the same word. It means that too. But ain't that amazing? The biblical definition before it's our definition. Passion means somebody whose heart's in it. Yes. It's what Webster said the amen corner in the church is. He defined it. The amen corner is where the zealous people are, where the passionate people are. Where the ones who can't hold their peace, they can't sometimes hold their seat. Amen. Praise God. It's that preacher. You know, Brother Rob, Lord, we bless him. He's going to be going, getting on treadmill, uh, you know, for long due to, you know, stress test. Last time I was being interviewed by the cardiologist before I was, they were talking to me and they, and they said, well, okay, we set you up for your stress test. What do you do for a living? I said, I'm a preacher. And they said, well, why is your, the, the, the cardiologist, they couldn't get, they said, your heart rate is real low. It was in the 50s. I'm just sitting there. And they said, do you exercise a lot? I said, well, I don't go to a gym. Um, I said, my watch that I used to wear said sometimes I do six to seven miles just on Sunday on my feet. And uh, the nurse spoke up, because I told him, I said, I'm a pastor. I said, I've been doing this. And back then, it was 31 years then, now it's 32. And, and, said, and she, she said, um, you one of them moving preachers? <laughs> I said, guilty as charged. <laughs> Hallelujah. I said, I can't be, st I said, and sometimes I'm liable to run, jump. I said, I've even been known to roll in the floor. <laughs> I get loud, I get, and they was laughing, you know, and and so and and we had it happen here one time. Somebody come here to work on the equipment, something to do with equipment, and it was about the filming part and something or other, and, and something got brought up, and the lady asked me the same thing, sitting there at the computer doing, hey, amen, and, and and she was talking about, yeah, you can put a one stationary where it just stay fixed, and I said, ma'am, I ain't gonna work here. <laughs> And, and, and she said, you know, them mechanical ones, I said, they ain't going to keep up with me. Right. Them heat sinks, sinks and no, or whatever they do, they ain't going to keep up with me. I even know if I wear something, they ain't going to She said, oh, you one of them moving preachers. This one of them moving churches? I said, yes, ma'am. One of them moving churches. Hallelujah. What, why? Passion will do that for you. How in the world can somebody go to a football game and scream and act like a fool for a dog? Right. Or whatever you want to say it is, a pigskin ball full of cold or hot air with men running around in tights. Come on, somebody. Hey, Amen. Some of them, no, I ain't going to say it, Lord. I could. If it was just men in here, I would, but I ain't going to say it. Hallelujah. Hey, Amen. Get excited over that and go crazy. Yes. And then come to God's house and just be lazy. And think it is somehow out of order. No, it's just out of style. It ain't never been out of order. Amen. You show me men and women in the Bible, you show me people who are passionate. And somebody say, if you're passionate for God, the God that hung on the cross, that was passionate for me and you, somebody shout, you'll show some emotion. You ever heard of these people where I'm not emotional? Shut your finger in that door. Let me put your finger in that door and I'll shut the door for you. Amen. Somebody look at your neighbor and point your finger out and say, you are an emotional creature because God made you. And where your heart is, your emotions will follow. Yeah, Lord. The Bible in the Old Testament calls, calls it the, 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 uh, the bow, the very center, the bow. Amen. The emotions. It also calls it the spirit, the heart. Amen. You realize the word soul literally defines the seat of the emotion. Somebody say when you're passionate in your soul, when it's so deep embedded in your mind that it gets down into your heart, that's the spirit of your mind, your soul. Somebody shout it to get your emotions up off its seat. Somebody say a lot of folks, this emotion is just still seated, but they got a seat of emotion. Come on, somebody. 
Amen. There's something that turns you on. Amen. That's why, amen, y'all hear me sing that song, tum, not Tum Sam. I'm getting, I got the spirit of jail on. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. But I, I, I'm not turning back because I'm too turned on. Don't mean I don't get opportunities to turn back every day, sometimes a million but a day. Uh, but somebody say, too turned on. There's a turning on, there's a passion. It's called zeal. Somebody say zeal. Jesus even said it in John 2, 17. He said the zeal, somebody say the passion of my house is eating me up. Jesus walked into the temple before he ever started his ministry. And he saw him in there abusing his house, misusing his house. And the disciples watched him take a cord, a piece of rope, and go in and with a scourge rope, really, a, a cord, and, and he starts hitting the tables, not people, but he's hitting the and he starts turning them over. Money's flying everywhere, and the doves, they've been selling for the Passover. They had turned the Passover into, amen, glory to God, a place where they could, uh, you know, just merchandise it. And it was just so religious and customary that that's what it become. It just become a little ceremony and, and a place to just go and be entertained. Amen. And people were buying, they were making money out. They were buying the pigeons, they were buying the doves, they were buying the, the, the lambs, and and all these different things uh, so they could sacrifice them ceremonially and go through the religious routines through their rites and get out of there and go uh, and thought they had done something during the Passover. Jesus comes in, takes a whip, uh, starts hitting the tables, uh, overturning tables. Uh, amen. Money's flying everywhere uh, and the doves and the pigeons and everything else. Lambs are getting loose. Uh, amen. Doves are flying through the temple everywhere. It's chaos, it appears to be, uh, but it's not chaos, it's Christ. Uh, amen. Come on, somebody. Uh, he's walked in there and the disciples look at each other and they quote from Psalm 69 where it's recorded because it's written remember us reading the zeal of mine house is eating me up some I'll say Jesus was so passionate for his own house. He had a zeal for his house. Some I'll say it was always eating at him. Boy, that preacher preaches about the house of God and being faithful to God's house like something's eating away at it is. It's eating away because it's eating away at him. Somebody say it's impossible to be passionate for him and not be passionate for those things that concern him. Amen. And at the top of the list is his house. Somebody shout, welcome to the house of God, not a hospital. Amen. For God. Somebody say this ain't a hospital. This is a house, not a hospital hospital, a house. Somebody say a hospital, it is not. But a house, it is. A hospital ain't somewhere you go and live. It's just somewhere you go when you need amen, something done for you to help you out. And you expect the staff to be on call. Amen. You expect them to be working there whether you're there or not. You expect them to be there when you need them. Oh, but it's it, not a house. A house is where you go to live. A house is a habitation. It's a place that you regularly go to. Amen. It's not a hospital. But many people People treat God the same way they do a doctor. Somebody shout, God is not a doctor. He's God. They just want to visit with him. They just want him to be on call. And Lord, I'll come to your house, to the hospital. Not your house, but a hospital. The hospital of God. Amen. I won't be there regularly. I'll just come when I need something. I'll be there to say, Lord, pray for me. Lord, do this for me. Preacher, lay hands on me. But don't expect me to commit myself. Don't expect me to be counted on, to be one that dwells. Amen. That's a house dweller but somebody shout this is not a hospital this is not the hospital of God because God's not a doctor somebody says it's the house of God we're children of God frequently come and get along with daddy and they come corporately together. Come on. They don't come here just when times are hard or when they need a miracle. Somebody shout, they come because it's his house. This is the type of zeal Jesus had. When Jesus began his ministry on the earth in John 2, 16, 17, it records on, hey man, I've been preaching from it. He enters into the temple. The first place he goes when he gets to Jerusalem, he don't go to the whorehouses. He don't go to people's houses personally. He don't go to the taverns, the places where people are partying and getting drunk. He don't go where things is going on bad in the street at. The first place he has to check out is his house. Mm. What if people, hey man, that was the first thing on the top of their list. God's house. Oh Lord have mercy. Somebody say Jesus had a passion for me. And he, he displayed it on the cross. And somebody shout the definition of this passion was suffering. Acts 1 and 3. 
Amen. And why did Jesus shed his blood and suffer on the cross? Acts 20 and 28. So he could purchase the church of God. Somebody say Jesus bought his church with his blood. That's how passionate he was. And his, the life of the flesh is in the blood, Leviticus 17, 11. So he gave his life. People have called it his life's blood. Well, it's your life's blood. Because the life of the flesh is in the blood. Your blood is your life. Without it, you don't live. Amen. Hallelujah. So when Jesus gave his life, he shed his blood. Somebody said that was his passion. Not only toward us, but his passion for his church. So everybody say, if I got a passion like he does for him, like he did for me, I'll lay down my life for him. Mm -hmm. And I will prize and I'll treasure as first things at the top of my to live list are those things that are precious to him. And the disciples, it's in Psalms. Let me, let me make sure I'm, I'm correct there. Amen. Hallelujah. Brother, you seem scattered. Yeah, that's what seed sowers do. Hallelujah. Scattered and seed. Thank you for the compliment. Psalm 6. I ain't saying that for none of y'all. It's going to be for somebody that's watching uh, later on. Uh, Psalm 69. Yeah, verses 9. I was right. Thank you, Holy Ghost. It's, it's written in the Old Testament, For the zeal of thine house hath eaten me up. Wow. And that's why in John 2, 17, the disciples, amen, when they watched Jesus at the beginning of his ministry, right at the beginning of it. Now, some's thinking, well, I thought he went into the temple and turned tables over and did all that at the end of his ministry before he was betrayed and crucified. He did. But John 2 reveals that he did it actually also at the beginning of his ministry. Two times. When he start, right before he started preaching, as he began his ministry, and when it's about to come to a close. And two times he said, my house should be called a house of prayer. Amen. Matthew 21, 13. And in John 2, I'm about to show you here. Somebody say, it must be important to him. My house. My house. He didn't say my people. Amen. My house. Shall be called a house of prayer. Oh, brother, I'm praying, I'm praying. Do you ever go to church? No, don't pray for me. You waste your time anyhow. You mean you tell me, preacher, I am wasting my time praying if I do not commit to the house of God? Yeah, because God says you're abusing my house. And if you turn away your ear from hearing my word, my law, my commandments, he said even your prayer will be an abomination unto me. Proverbs 28, verses 9. Somebody says it's the house of prayer. It's the place where we come and we call on God in the altars. And listen, it says in verse 16 of John 2, And he said unto them that sold doves, Take these things hence, make not my house a house of merchandise. Verse 17, And his disciples remembered that it was written, this is Psalm 69 verse 9, The zeal of thine house hath eaten me up. And in verses 13 of John 2, it says it was the time for the Jews' Passover. Now, when you study John cha or Exodus chapter 12, verses 14, God called it the Lord's Passover. Ain't that just like people today? What's God's, they've now called theirs. It, it said it was the Jews' Passover. It's never been the Jews' Passover. That's ceremony. That's religious. That's how they were abusing even the set time. And even the people that had gathered there, it was just a ceremony. Amen? And Jesus was so zealous about his house, his disciples remembered what David prophesied. Somebody say they're remembering the scriptures. When it says they remembered, they were saying he's fulfilling what David prophesied. Amen. This is, in other words, they were looking at each other, they remembered. They were saying, my God, it's happening right in front of our eyes. Jesus is acting like a crazy Christ. Has he lost his mind? Why is he looking like that? This is the Jesus that a lot of people don't like to hear preached about. He was so passionate for his house. He come in the sun. He just started tearing things just up. And he actually started running them out. Because somebody said they were doing everything there except prayer, which is relationship with God. Meaning what they were doing was just ceremony. But somebody say we see it presented here. Jesus had a passion for his house. He had a passion, some ought to say a passion.